In a world where high-end gaming PCs exist for thousands of dollars, one man has embarked on the epic quest to make such high-end gaming PC for a hundred dollars. And how, you may ask? Well, the only answer is madness. This is Season 3 of the $100 Flip-Up Challenge. It is finally time for the most requested series here at Tech Yes City, and that is taking $100 and turning it into a high-end gaming PC via using this right here, this $100 note, and buying the cheapest parts we can find and then trying to flip them in either gaming PCs or individual sales and then working our way up eventually to that RTX 4090 gaming PC. Now, starting off season three right here, this is the first episode, we are going to be in a tough predicament, probably the most toughest predicament I have ever been in because A, this 100 Aussie dollars is not worth the same amount that it was in the previous starts of season one and season two. And the second thing is, since the last season, there's been a lot of inflation that's come through. So a lot of people generally don't even wanna put something up for sale here unless they're gonna be getting more than $50 for it. For some people, this would be a bit of a deterrent. They said, no, nah, I'm not willing to do it. But for me, I'm willing to get my hands dirty and start cleaning up those used PC parts and seeing what magic we can make in this season. So get ready, join us for the journey, win or lose, and let's get cracking. Season three of the $100 Flip Up Challenge is brought to you by VIP SCD Keys, bringing you that $15 Windows 10 Pro Key license when you use that coupon code BFTYC. Links in description below. So I actually wanted to start this first episode of season three, actually a few weeks ago for you guys, but there was just one big problem. And that was, I couldn't find any good deals. And at this price point, I really have to make this $100 stretch as far as possible to be able to not only get parts that I'm gonna be able to resell what I think would be relatively easy and make a decent profit on, but I've also gotta make sure those parts work and I don't get hosed because this is the biggest risk, is I won't have pretty much any wiggle room after I'm done buying. What I'm hoping to do, get is a system and then also a monitor and possibly a budget keyboard and mouse, which I'm gonna to have to clean all this stuff up and then try and make it present it as a nice gaming combo. However, the reason it's also late this first episode is that we did find a deal when I was doing my used PC parts hunt but unfortunately there was a massive storm that came through. I found this listing for $180, offered the guy $80, he accepted, he said come pick it up, but then he was like over an hour away, and by the time I could message him the next day, he'd already sold that PC. But this PC right here in the background that I pulled up, we're going to go pick this up right now, and then they wanted 150 Aussie dollars, that was the asking price. I put in an offer of $80 actually a few days ago, and then they said no initially, I've come back, I've kind of pestered them, and they've accepted that offer finally. So we are going to go pick this thing up right now. They said it's a full working i5 uh, second gen system with ample amounts of DDR3 memory. It's also got a drive in it. It's also got a GTX 760. So this is looking like it's really good. They're saying everything works out. So fingers crossed, we're gonna go check it out and make sure it does work before we buy it. But fingers crossed, this could be the whole thing to get this series started. So let's go get to the Yesmobile, that's my car and go get Papa Loppin'. Alright, so we have just picked up the PC right now. We got this for $80. He's confirmed it is all working absolutely fine. I went into Device Manager when I was at his place, just checked everything was the spec that he said it was. However, I didn't get to run a, a Unigine Heaven stress test on it, so I will do that when I get home. But $80, that leaves us with another $20 now to try and make some magic happen, perhaps. And we're kind of like in the middle of this like suburban area here. So I'm just gonna see if there's like, I don't know. I was told by a friend 
that there's a place called Cash Converters and they've got monitors really cheap there at the moment. So I'm gonna go check them out, see what they've got. And they might even have a mouse and keyboard or something like that too. Because I actually am thinking this PC, I'm hoping it just works 100% perfect even on the GPU and we can get a mouse keyboard and monitor as well and do a whole setup flip. That would be awesome. So now we've got this PC back here and we have booted it up and it is a little bit noisy but it's also a bit dirty. So we're gonna clean this thing up tomorrow. However, I gotta let two games download overnight and they are Counter-Strike 2 and also Fortnite because I know if I sell this as a gaming PC or whatever I sell it for as a gaming PC package, people are going to ask about either Fortnite FPS or CS2 FPS. And so if I know those details, I'll be ready to just make a solid flip and if you're wondering about Roblox, well, that'll run on any vegetable, you name it. A potato, a turnip, an onion, a tomato, Roblox will run on that thing. So should be absolutely fine. But I am worried about this right here. This is the power supply in this case. It's called an IQ, never heard of it, never seen it before. And the biggest worry is here is this 12 volt rail, 18 amps. 216 watts so that's a concern because that's like pretty much the max rating right that's the max rating on the 12 volt line and so this gtx 760 and this i5 2500 i'm worried it just might not do the job so once these games are downloaded which should be finished overnight i will then be able to just play the games for a little while stress test them see if this is okay i may need to even undervolt this gtx 760 which i'll probably just do anyway and tell the person i'm selling it to that you just have to undervolt it because that's the catch to buying the cheap gaming setup <laughs> i'm going to be selling now i'm not sure what's going on with this ssd over here it's like some just real hacked up bang job install. So we're going to take a look at all this tomorrow. We're going to clean it up, play some games in the morning, and also go back to cash converters. If everything here checks out fine, I may have to change this power supply. So I might not even be able to get a monitor and uh, anything else with this. So I may have to just spend my money repairing this PC, the $20 we got left. So fingers crossed, though, we can get around all this but we're only gonna find out once these games are downloaded. And also this will be easy to clean up this mess right here. So let's uh, actually quickly test Unigy in heaven too and see if it cuts out on that. And it's uh, unfortunately, it's literally froze on the first scene of Unigy in heaven. So you can see <laughs> the FPS is actually moving up the top here, but the screen is just not moving at all. So, I think the undervolt could be beneficial for not just the power supply, but also maybe the GPUs <laughs> oh, done itself too hard. So let's just try that fix. I've actually never seen Unigine Heaven. The FPS count is still moving up here. Computer hasn't froze or anything, but the actual screens just froze. Bizarre. Okay, so we've got no frequency curve editor on the GTX 760, so we're going to have to improvise a little bit here, and we're just going to have to grab this little power slider down here, drop it bit down to maybe like 7, 70%. So this is going to uh, drop our G GTX 760 into something like a, maybe a 750 Ti, and the saddest thing is, I'm pretty confident this is actually going to work. <laughs> this is, I don't know, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Should I be ashamed of this? <laughs> Fixing up a PC that a guy said works and it doesn't work. And then I, it, I'll get it working, but uh, I guess that's why he didn't list it as a gaming PC. And this is the reason right here. So we've got it. Even with the power limiter down here, we've got it at 148 watts and then the CPU is burning up 70 watts. So that is, I mean, even just those two values alone is, is like 220 watts. So that's 
coming well over this IQ value here. So, oh man, we're gonna have to like, what if we just drop it down to 46%? And that puts, <laughs> there we go. That's a safe bet. So this, uh, this combo clearly before, it was just like the power supply was just crashing because it was just too much. But I mean, power limiting it at 70% still most of the time gives you like most of what this GPU has to offer without dropping performance too much. But I'm still worried that those values are still bad for this power supply because it's really a, like a 220 watt power supply. So that's pretty much right on, the, right on the money with what this power supply can do. And then you've got to account for like spikes and things like that. So let's, I mean, ultimately let's just leave it on overnight, stress test it, play it in games and see if this thing can, can handle it, I guess. And there's also another problem that's creeped up and that was the CPU is reaching a hundred degrees. So <laughs> this is just on heaven, which is like, I mean, yeah, sure. It's going to a hundred percent usage, which is good, but that should be like under 80 degrees. So there's something wrong there as well. So we definitely got like, we got kind of hosed with this PC. Like if you were just a normal person buying this PC and you got a home, man, you're coming into a house of horrors here. So this PC is like, man, this guy sold a lemon, literally just put together a lemon, did not care about it and just passed it off. And this is what like, this is, what, this is what gives like the used market a bad name is stuff like this. People just selling PCs like, yeah, it works fine. There's no problems. And I've already come into two massive problems and that's the power supply and now the CPU's overheating. So, wow. I, I really was hoping this wouldn't be the case, but we're gonna have to fix that up tomorrow morning as well. So, I'm just gonna go sleep, get a good night's rest. And I'm going to come back to this little house of horrors in the morning. So we are now up on the next day and we're checking out the thermal paste on this cooler. And it looks like they've used fresh thermal paste, which is a good thing. It just means I'm going to have to undervolt the i5-2500, which actually comes in at 3.7 gigahertz all cores, which is, I'm not too familiar with this CPU. I'm actually more familiar with the i5-2400 which comes in at 3.4 gigahertz all core max. So we're gonna start tuning this thing up and undervolting it in the BIOS, see what we can do and see what the results will be. I'm hoping that we can get this thing like down from 70 watts in that heaven benchmark down to say 50. And that'll also allow this CPU to run a bit cooler. And the most important thing is take some strain off the IQ power supply. So there's some really good news with this CPU cooler and CPU right now. And that is, it is running significantly better than it was before. So it, it was going up to 70 watts, 100 degrees last night. Now it's going down to 50 degrees and it's going, I think max I saw it go up to was like 35 watts. So perhaps the settings were pretty bad by default in the BIOS. I mean, it is an i5-2500, which I, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of, but maybe the CPU cooler in one of the corners wasn't on properly. So, that, I mean, that's just a tremendously better result than we were getting before. Just miles better. So we did a 50 millivolt undervolt, but we also took the speeds down to 3.4 gigahertz from 3.7. So essentially it's an i5-2400 now, but this is just so much better because I can, actually be confident once I've cleaned all this up, I can be confident I can sell this without having any crashes. And so what I'm gonna do right now is before I clean it, I'm actually gonna play a little bit of Fortnite. So I wanna get the FPS numbers, a little bit of CS2, and I wanna test uh, in those games for a bit of stability as well. Plus I'll be leaving it on after that, just to make sure it doesn't crash. But these numbers are looking a lot better now, a lot better. The GPU is staying under 70 degrees as well. And yeah, some actual decent news from a real bad initial impression of this PC. So we just finished testing out CS2 here and we're actually going to 
take a photo of this FPS. I mean, this is 1080p, 120 FPS on low settings, but still it's actually quite a feat for hardware this old. I'm actually surprised on the upside here. So I'm gonna take a little photo of this and then jump into Fortnite. So we just finished up playing Fortnite and that surprisingly did quite well. This was the performance mode, lower settings, and it was giving out anywhere from 80 to 120 FPS. And it was stuttering sometimes, but it wasn't too bad. It was ultimately a playable experience at 1080p. So that in CS2, I'm ready to start cleaning this thing, coupled in with no crashing while I'm testing these games. It's a little bit shameful, but it works. So at this stage, we've repaired this banger and it's working. We've just got to make it look a little bit better. So we're going to get on to cleaning it up now. So this PC is all cleaned up, ready for a photo shoot. And there's also another good thing, and that is Windows 10 Pro is already activated. So we don't need to spend any extra money on all that stuff. And we've still got 20 Aussie dollars left over, which we're going to now try and go to a local cash converters and see if they've just got some kind of cheap monitor and hopefully a keyboard and mouse as well. So fingers crossed, we can make this whole gaming setup just work. So we've now just finished up at Cash Converters in Rabina and we got ourselves a $2 keyboard that's missing a key up the right hand side here and the left hand side. And we asked them when I was at the checkout, I just said, do you have any mice? And they did have a really sort of bottom of the barrel mouse to throw in with that. And the good thing is they give you a three month guarantee on this stuff. And then we got the main prize here, the monitor, $15. They also had a $10 monitor that I took up to the counter and then I didn't realize they said like, look, this doesn't come with an adapter or anything. So then I went back, found this Lenovo monitor for $15 and I thought this was a win because they guarantee this as well for three months and they give you the power cable, DVI cable and an HDMI cable. So I've got a spare monitor cable out of all this, just like I've got now a spare Molex cable and a spare CETA cable from the build that we pulled off there, as well as a spare 20 centimeter fan that was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna get used in the future of this series, but it's always good to have some spares when you're starting from the bottom of the barrel. So let's get this home. We're gonna to have to obviously clean up this keyboard and mouse, that needs a big clean. We'll give the monitor a light clean and then see if we can get the whole setup done for 97 Aussie dollars that will actually work. And also see if that stress test survived with me being gone all that time. And we're back at the Tech Yes studio. The keyboard is here ready to be cleaned. The monitor is ready to be cleaned. 
and our stress test is still working. So that is some extremely good news coming out of this little banger right here. It's time to complete the build and then talk about how much we're gonna try and get for this and our forward strategy moving on. And here we are with the final product and everything is working, including doing a type test on this keyboard. And I'm surprised it works because this keyboard was so filthy. There was just dirt and grime everywhere. We gave it a clean with a wipe the first time over. Then we gave it some multi-purpose spray and then blowed it all down and got all the dirt out and then just gave it another clean after that with a wipe and it came up really well. Now you've gotta be very careful when cleaning a membrane keyboard. I believe this is a membrane keyboard because if you, um, essentially if you put it through a dishwasher, the membrane keys themselves will just get all mushy and they will no longer work again. If you go too hard on the cleaning, you take all the key caps off and then you try and get the uh, blower in there, that can also debase the membrane plate and you'll have a keyboard that's essentially as good as a defective one and it won't work properly. So the fact that we clean this keyboard up and it works and it's also got some red backlighting is really good because we're now at the final finish line, ready to take some photos. We've done all our stress tests and we also had no escape key, but what we did here was we moved the end key to escape because I'm thinking, okay, that'll kind of be all right, I'm sure end escape kind of similar thing and then we also just moved like a bit of symmetry at the top right hand corner of this keyboard just to <laughs> make a give it our best chance so let's get photoing and then doing a sum up of this whole pc and what we want to try and flip it for And we have now crossed the finish line for episode one and we have listed this PC up for sale for 250 Aussie dollars for the whole set. I'm hoping it'll sell pretty quickly and we can start episode two with a much higher budget. And even though it's only 250 Aussie dollars if we start the next episode, it's still much higher where this episode was extremely tough to get something working for 100 Aussie dollars. I took a big gamble with that PC and I think we came out okay in the end. I'm actually grateful in the end that we had a working product because that power supply, if I had to change that power supply over, that would be a lot of time and also more money that I honestly, I don't really have in the budget to get a power supply that works and has higher wattage. So I would have maybe had to have gone to um, someone up in Brisbane who I'd usually go to on the parts hunts and get a $10 power supply off him. But even then, if he doesn't have any good ones in stock, I'm in the same situation that I was in when I first got this PC. So the fact that we undervolted that GPU and that CPU and it came out okay, both the temperatures on the CPU and the power supply being able to handle it was good news. Now, also the extra $20 that we had, we got really lucky in that we got a $2 keyboard, which after cleaning it up, it's fine. And then we got that $15 monitor and that works fine too. So coming in at $97 clutch for this whole setup. And we're still, this is the best part of it all. We've got some spare parts now. We've got a spare SATA cable. We've got a spare 
Molex to SATA connect dot. We've also got a spare HDMI cable, spare 20 centimeter fan. So we've got some little uh, wiggle parts to move into with the future episodes. And I'm just hoping that $250 budget comes in sooner because I'm really enjoying this. You guys know it's a lot of fun. I do apologize for not getting out this series and kickstarting it again sooner. I guess I missed how much fun it was. It's actually a lot of fun to hit the road and look for good deals. And uh, even if you get a bad deal, turn it into a good deal in the end, which I guess is what we've done here. So usually I know, and another thing I'll say is usually like, we're just, we're going as hard as we can here. We're kind of teetering on the edge. If I had more budget, I would definitely put in a different power supply. Usually when I do flips, I usually put in something like this as a minimum. It's a deep, cool, like 600 watt. Usually it's, it's actually a 450 watt true power supply, but it does the job on a lot of like um, GTX 1060, 1070 rigs and stuff like that on a budget. So that's what I've, I would have liked to have put that in. We just don't have the budget at all for that kind of power supply. And if that power supply didn't work, we'd have been out of pocket another $10. So we wouldn't have been able to get the keyboard and the monitor and the, and, the mon and the mouse in the whole setup there. So we're just really lucky that power supply did come through because I just couldn't have done a monitor keyboard mouse for $10. I don't think that's possible <laughs> unless it's like a 17 inch or something like that. And that monitor would have to be $8. Anyway, guys, this is the end of episode one. We are now going to get this PC sold and come back to episode two and talk about what happened with that sale as well. And then the plan going into episode two and seeing what magic we can pull. But coming out of this episode, I'm actually pretty happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you want to see the next episode, the moment it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.